How much do, do genetics play a role in muscle size and strength? Well, we have tiers here, okay? And I'm not being dismissive, but I mean, we have genetics. What are genetics? Okay. You have muscle shape, how a muscle looks. For example, my tricepticons look like juicy, very juicy, right? My, my triceps look juicy, but my arms are generally only like probably 17 inches when I'm lean. But my arm, because of how juicy my arm, my triceps look, they look much bigger. Now, I used to work with um, Mark Lobliner at Tiger Fitness, a professional bodybuilder. His triceps were really, uh, and I'm not bashing on the guy, uh, his triceps didn't have the same genetic shape as mine. They looked smaller. He could bench the same. He still had big arms. They just looked different. So you have l different looks in muscle groups. Like my bicep is a potato. It doesn't peak at all. It looks like a potato. Some people have that peak that makes their bicep look uh, more impressive. So we have different genetics when it comes to appearance. Okay. We have different limb lengths. Like I have a longer torso and longer arms and shorter legs, but none of this stuff is going to limit your muscle size and strength. It just, there's levels, right? You want to get as big as and as strong as you can naturally, get to a four or five squad, get 17 inch arms. You're not going to be limited by genetics. You're going to be limited by your big, juicy testicles, right? I don't want to hear it. Anybody can get there, right? Anybody can get in the shadow of it. Even if you can't get 17 inch arms, you can surely get 16 and a half inch arms. So I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about your woes, your bullshit, whatever. Come down here and train with me. I'll kick your ass seven ways to Sunday, and we'll get shit sorted out real quick. We will. And I'm not, I'm not trying to talk with bravado, but it's true, man. You go train with somebody and get some shit sorted out. You, you can do this. Um, to be like gym legend, can everybody get to gym legend strength? Well, probably not, but you can get in the shadow of it. You know, I'm going to say this politely and turn on your speakers, and I'm sorry for profanity, but fuck genetics. Uh, it's such an overused, overplayed concept. There's so many, you're like, you know what's more important to ge genetics? Like mental strength, like drive, like passion, like focus on form, like how my a bicep looks or if I have short legs or arms, who cares? I've seen tall lifters move incredible amounts of weight on squats and Guys with long arms move incredible amount of weight on bench. None of that crap matters. Unless you got some birth defect, and I've trained Special Olympians. I'm gonna. I'm here to tell you, I've trained Special Olympians, and in the five or six months I trained them, they nearly caught the average gym lifter, if not surpassed the average gym lifter. So I mean this in the most respectful way. I do not give a fuck about your woes, your perceived genetics, or any of that stuff. doesn't mean shit to me because I've seen people – I've seen people with multiple sclerosis, uh, MS, do single arm pull-ups with the wheelchair on their back and their wife on their back. I've seen special Olympians get up to nearly a 500-pound deadlift in six months. I don't want to hear about anybody's shit. What I want to hear about from somebody is how they're going to do it, how they're going to make it happen safely, right? Because in my world, genetics don't mean shit. When I see somebody sitting here on the worldwide inner tubes, on the worldwide YouTubes, in the comments saying, uh, I've trained for 20 years. I'll never be able to make it and all this kind of shit, man. Like, you have the mentality. You have a loser mentality. You're going nowhere fast. You need to you need to get your shit straight. And you, you, need, to, you need to do something that's going to be a game changer. You need to focus. Stop jumping programs. Nail your damn diet. Get up at 5 a.m., chase chickens around your yard like Rocky Balboa and slam raw eggs and do something, man. Let's see the fire. Let's see the power. Let's see the passion. Let's see the borderline insanity and love for this stuff, right? Let's not see any genetics talk. What kind of genetics? So your bicep looks like a potato who gives a crap. So your, your arms are a little bit shorter, and that doesn't make me a good deadlifter. Who gives a crap? Right, you can still you can still conquer the moon and 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 destroy the sun. You can still be a a mover of worlds and a force of nature. A force of nature is a mental state more than anything. 
we we train hard, but we train smart so we can stay in the game and not get injured. It, victim mentality, genetics. I'm a victim of my genetics. I'm a victim. I can't get enough sleep. I, you know, all this kind of stuff. You know, I don't care about any of that. I want to see you get up in the morning and show me that you want it, right? And you're like, oh, that sounds good for somebody who's just naturally big and strong. You know what? I there's pictures of me when I was like 11 years old, lying in bed in like 1977, 78, and I am a skinny, fat, mooby son of a bitch. Like even back in 70, 77, 78. I had man boobs and I was skinny fat and I just looked horrible. I was always physically active back then, always physically active. I was running, I was doing step ups, I was playing baseball. I would go take a tennis racket and whack the ball against the wall. I was always doing something. I had a concrete weight set, I was moving that, doing push ups, doing everything. And I looked like a sack of crap. And I could have sat there back then. At age seven, right? My genetics, ugh, I just exercised for six, seven years straight, and I look like crap. I have man boobs and all that kind of stuff. People don't believe this, but here's your styloid process, that little bumpy wump, right? That little bump on your wrist. If you measure your wrist inside of there towards your hand, uh, and then, like, I had, like, 6.25-inch wrists, super small. Now, there was some information that the strongest men in the world tend to have bigger bone size, right? Well, they also probably are bigger, taller, and built more like strong men, right? But on the other hand, if you have a small wrist size, you're probably not built like a strong man, so you probably don't have that overall potential. You know, you're probably a little bit deficient. But my my, I was a skinny twerp. Right. When I entered college, I was like 152, 153, 154. I don't know. Don't hold me to it. I wasn't weighing myself every day. I had one of those old school 1972 scales where the, the things bobbing around like crazy. And you're like, is that what? Right. You know, so I was skinny fat back then. And the first time I got on bench, I, I put on 95 pounds. I'm in the I'm in the gym at New Mexico Tech, my college. I'm like, uh, it doesn't look like much weight, right? I got pegged on rep three, and I'm literally sitting there like I'm never coming back in the gym. I'm never coming back in the gym. I feel so embarrassed. I got buried on my first real bench press set ever, just absolutely buried. It was so embarrassing, just absolutely embarrassing. But I came back. No one was in the gym. And um, mentally, I just picked up from that day. I'm just going to try and improve by one. I didn't have like some end goal, like I'm going to get to a 315 pound bench. This was 1986. No one gave a crap about a 315 pound bench. It's not like everybody walked around talking about this stuff, right? They didn't. But I came back, I got 94 by 5, 90, or 95 by 4, 94 by 5. Eventually, we're moving up to 100, 110. Eventually, after 18 months or 20, I don't know, I think 30 months, two and a half years. It was 275 by four or five or six. That's how I did it. Small bone, nailing my nutrition, nailing my sleep. No one came to me like you have poor genetics. I was skinny, fat, small, wristed. I was naturally weak. I loved sports, but I sucked. I wasn't a good natural athlete. 